Hello, has your Glowworm FlexiCon boiler stopped working and now there is a message in the display saying F1 or F4? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can reset your boiler and then hopefully it'll start working again. And also some simple checks you can go through which may have caused the problem. If your boiler is showing F22, then it means that it is running low on water and just needs to be topped up. Of course, I've made a video showing you how to top up your boiler and you can click on the link here or down in the description to watch my video video on how to top up your boiler if you have that F22 fault and that should get it up and running again. If you're a gas engineer or whether you just want to know what the fault codes mean then at the end of the video I've included an instruction manual with some photos of the fault codes which tell you exactly what the faults may be. But just bear in mind the fault codes only point you in a general direction and sometimes they're completely wrong so don't always rely on the fault codes. If the problem does persist and doesn't go away, then stick around to the end of the video and I'm gonna tell you my top tips on what you should do before you call an engineer. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for over 20 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you're new to my channel, then don't forget you can click subscribe. That way you'll get a notification the next time I upload a video. If you do find my video helpful in any way, then please give me some feedback by clicking on the thumbs up. That will also help others to find the video. And of course, share the video with your friends. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it'll help me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. Now let's get on with the video and show you how to reset that boiler. In the description, you'll find all the links which I mentioned in this video, plus lots of other helpful links. So here we go then, this is the boiler and you'll see it's a Glowworm and it's a Flexicom 24CX. Now if we go back to the display, we will see that it's flashing F4. Now what F4 means is the boiler was operating and for some reason the flame has gone out and of course the boiler has then stopped working. Now I had one of my customers give me a call and said that his boiler had stopped working. He was an older gentleman and uh, I went out to the boiler to take a look and of course you can see the display was flashing F4. I took the cover off the boiler, had a good look around, couldn't find anything wrong and then six months later it's been working absolutely fine. So if your boiler does come up with a fault code it doesn't necessarily mean there's a big fault. Like all modern technology it might just be having a funny five minutes. Now to reset the boiler all we need to do is to locate the reset button which is in this hole under the display. Then use a pencil or a biro, insert it into the hole and then push in the button and then you'll see the display change and then that has then reset the boiler. Now what we need to do is to test the boiler. So on this boiler as it's a combination boiler I'm going to go to a hot tap, I'm going to turn the tap on then come back to the boiler and then I should see a picture of the tap and also a picture of the flame and of course you should hear the boiler operating. If you don't have a combination boiler then just go to your controls, select central heating or hot water, turn it on and look for the flame coming up in the display. If after resetting your boiler, the boiler comes up with another fault code like this F1. Now this is a very similar fault code to the F4 in that the boiler has now tried to light five times and it's not managed to light. So it stopped working and come up with the F1 fault. Unfortunately, there is very little you can do, but you can make sure that the gas is actually turned on. You can do this by going to another gas appliance in the house, like a gas hob or a gas fire, turning it on and making sure you have gas there. You can also locate your gas meter and check the handle. I have come across it where the handles have been accidentally knocked off. If you have a prepayment meter, also make sure that the credit hasn't run out. There is one other place I will check to make sure the gas has not been turned off and that's underneath the boiler. I've only come across it once, but I did come across it where this valve had been shut and all you've got to do is make sure it's in line with the valve like that. If the flame doesn't appear in the display, then I'm afraid there's not a lot you can do. If it just goes back to lockout, then all you can try doing it is pressing the reset set again and if that doesn't work I'm afraid you're probably gonna have to call an engineer. To help us engineers write down the fault and exactly what the boiler was doing also any sounds or noises which it's making when the fault occurred. That way we'll be able to diagnose the fault quicker and get your boiler up and running again quicker. As promised here are the fault codes that are listed in the maintenance book. You'll see that the F1 and F4 the description are very similar but the possible cause is exactly the same. I've also included the rest of the fault codes which are in the book. 
Just bear in mind, fault codes point you in the general direction. Sometimes they can be completely wrong, so you can't always rely on fault codes. I'm often asked, is it okay to keep resetting your boiler? Well, that really depends on what fault code is coming up on your boiler. Most modern boilers these days will go into that lockout situation when the circuit board inside the boiler detects that the boiler is not working correctly. There are generally three reasons why boilers go into a lockout situation. The first reason is to make you go and physically look at the boiler and see what's wrong with it. And it will not operate until you look at it and press that reset button. The second reason is for safety. So the boiler will detect that it is not working properly and then it will go into a lockout situation to prevent it from working and keep itself safe. The third reason would be to protect itself. So if your boiler runs out of water, for instance, you don't want the boiler running with no water in it because it's going to damage itself. So the boiler will turn itself off to protect itself from being damaged. Having said that, not all boilers will turn themselves off when they run out of water. So if your boiler does keep going to lockout and you have to keep pressing that reset button, then maybe you should think twice because you might actually be damaging your boiler. Think about calling an engineer. If you need to find a local gas registered engineer, then I've left a link in the description below, which takes you to the gas register. The gas register holds all the UK gas registered engineers. Then you'll be able to find a genuine local engineer who should be able to help you out. Right, that's about it then. So I do hope my video has been helpful to you. If it has, then please give me some feedback by clicking on that thumbs up. That will also help others to find the video. If you do want to watch my other video on how to top up your boiler, then you can click on the link here. Of course, you can look in the description below where you find lots of other links to my other videos and also to the gas register. I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos, which will hopefully help you. And of course, don't forget you can share the video with your friends. And of course, click that subscribe if you want to see more help videos. That's about it then. So. Bye for now and I'll see you next time.